So what we see here are these uh, the little maggots uh, right as they come from the packaging. Now, larva therapy has been used for a long time, actually since the Civil War, and uh, when people would have uh, grotesque, limb-threatening injuries, sometimes the doctor would come and use a dirty hacksaw and uh, and saw their arm or leg off. And a lot of times those those patients or soldiers would die from sepsis. Um, but the ones who weren't exactly found right away and uh, the larva, the maggots, were able to uh, attack their, 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 their nearly necrotic arm, those patients would actually survive and get um, true amputations, and, and uh, which was unlikely, you know, you wouldn't survive it if you were to have a doctor actually saw it off back then. So the recent research has uh, shown that, uh, that the, the larvae have secretions and excretions which are antimicrobial. The idea behind that being is that they don't want to compete with the bacteria for their food. Uh, so the research has shown that this is actually a viable way for wound care, although it is definitely not the standard of care. Typically, the standard of care would be sharp debridement and, um, you know, and, and or sandal enzymatic debridement uh, just to get all this non-viable tissue off the wound. That's the idea. And so the, this patient had uh, refused previous uh, uh, offers to get his wound treated in a more standard way. He preferred to try out the larva therapy. I told him I had no experience with that. He said I, he, that he trusted me. So I contacted the lab in California with one, uh, and I talked to the doctor who, who runs it, and he actually is the author of a lot of the papers that you would, you would look up on PubMed and, and see what the actual research is. And I read a bunch of those papers before I applied it to him. So I says to the doctor, I go, hey, uh, you know, what, how long am I supposed to keep these things on there for? I have no idea. And he says, uh, 48 hours. I go, I don't know if this patient will even come back in 48 hours. Um, what happens if, he, you know, if we leave him on for longer? And the doctor said, oh, uh, then they'll try to escape. Okay, got it. So, uh, but the patient did come back. And so in here in the second video, we could see us revealing it uh, 48 hours later. Uh, this weird bandage that we had to put on, pretty much it's weather stripping surrounding the wound with a special screen. And uh, this guy had to pull this thing into bed with him. Imagine that. So uh, we could, at the end of the day, the wound is about 75% debrided. The rest of the wound looks absolutely great. Um, and so I said to him, hey, we could do this one more time and it'll probably finish it off and get rid of the rest of the, uh, the non-viable tissue. And he refused. He wanted to go back to standard of uh, care, kind of wound care. Uh, I guess have, you know, dragging maggots into bed with you for two nights. I might do that for you. This video was taken right after I placed these medical larvae, also known as maggots, onto a diabetic foot wound. They were bought from Monarch Lab in California prior to this application. And they come, into, uh, they come in a jar with two impregnated gauzes with about 250 sterile maggots on each gauze. I had no prior experience when it comes to larva therapy, and the lab was really nice to put me in touch with the medical director, actually the doctor who did a lot of the research for this, and he gave me a great lesson over the phone, made it for an easy application. And it's pretty interesting to say the least. If I feel like I'm not gonna, if I'm gonna see something that I won't expect, I like to get as much of the literature under my belt as possible, gather as much information as possible, so I still remain the expert in the situation as best as I possibly can. So let's talk more about this situation. So this patient is a non-compliant diabetic. He absolutely refuses to take his diabetes medications. He had gone to the hospital for a leg infection and on x-ray examination, they found a staple in his foot, which was causing a necrotic wound and cellulitis all the way up his leg. The doctors at the hospital had removed the, uh, the foreign body from his foot. They removed some of the necrotic tissue. They put him on antibiotics. However, he left the hospital against medical advice right after his procedure, and he came to my office, uh, and he had an order form uh, for the maggot therapy saying, I want this maggot therapy, and it's the only thing that I'm going to allow. After an exhausting conversation where I told him this is not the standard of care and this is not the typical treatment for this situation, what the typical treatment is for this situation is antibiotics and sharp debridement, meaning that we remove all the dead and non-viable tissue out of the wound with the scalpel and put them on, you know, things that are proven to kill bacteria. Again, he absolutely refused. We agreed that we're going to attempt the medical maggots and he's not going to sue me if he loses his leg or his life. And I made sure to document this in exhaustive exhaustive detail in my, my medical notes. So paraphrasing from one of the good articles that are out there, Jan et al. in uh, 2018, uh, 2018, excuse me, uh, worldwide live maggots have been used to clean wounds by ingesting and degrading and liquefying the devitalized necrotic tissue, 
uh, selectively, meaning only the bad stuff and not the good stuff, not the only the bad tissue. The dead tissue is what the maggots will eat. Uh, the two authors from back in the American Civil War, Zacharias and Jones, found that patients treated with medical maggots were less likely to die from sepsis and other complications as compared to patients who were primarily amputated with the dirty, unsanitized, unsterilized tools that the doctors were using at the time. It was uh, not until... Uh, the 2000s that uh, the Food and Drug Administration finally granted the use of medical maggots uh, for wound care treatment. So without getting into too much detail, the way this uh, phenomenon occurs and why maggots actually work is because when the maggots are on when the maggots are on these wounds, they secrete and excrete these special chemicals and peptides and enzymes which inhibit the growth of bacteria. And they do this in order to reduce the amount of competition for the same food because they're eating the same thing, which is the non-viable dead tissue, which we also want out of the wound as well. So here's the next video. This is 48 hours later where we, after we put the maggots onto his foot. And uh, we see that the maggots have got to be about 10 times the size as they were when I put them on. Uh, I was afraid this patient may not have followed up. So when I talked to the medical director at Monarch Labs, I asked him, hey, you know, what would happen if this guy didn't show up for a second appointment? And he said, well, the maggots will try to escape. <laughs> so I imagine this must have been a little unsettling to drag this foot into his bed. So, uh, yeah, he definitely showed up to his appointment on time. Uh, and I got to say, the maggots did an amazing job. They probably removed maybe 75% of the total necrotic and fibrotic tissue. That would have been honestly pretty uh, tough and technical to remove selectively with the sharp debridement without removing too much vital tissue, vitalized tissue. Since there was more tissue that could have been removed and we didn't get the whole thing out, um, I asked him if he wanted to do a second round of the larva, la the larva and uh, he was not interested. He didn't want to drag this thing back into bed with him. Um, also, just so you guys know, my medical assistant couldn't handle videotaping this situation live. She was actually outside of the room and just had her arm inside the room. While, yeah, so she did a good job, given that she wasn't actually looking at what she was doing. That's why it was cut short. Uh, the remainder of the visit that you know happens after this videotaping had stopped, I scraped the larva off his foot into the garbage bag, and I used uh, like a spray ethyl chloride to zap the last ones crawling away. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get all of that on tape. Uh, here are some pictures, though, of uh, what the foot looked like before the treatment, during the treatment, and after the treatment. Uh, afterwards, we did more of a standard care. He was a le he did let me put him on antibiotics. He did let me do sharp debridement after that. He did have a complicated wound course after that because he did he still refused to take his diabetes medication. And he ended up with a large necrotizing fasciitis, which needed an extensive surgery later at the time. But that had nothing to do with the maggots or <laughs> us not giving him the proper standard of care. It's him refusing the standard of care. Any questions, please feel free to comment, like the video to help us get out to more people, and subscribe for more content. And remember, every day is the best day of your life.